let's keep moving to, <laughs> to headline number two. This is an interesting point we left out of discussion last week with Bed Bath & Beyond. Okay. And it was brought to light am by the Wall Street Journal this week that said that Bed Bath & Beyond is burning through its cash reserves. Here are the key points from the article. The retailer ended May with roughly $100 million in cash after burning through more than $300 million of its reserves and borrowing $200 million from its credit line. Mm -hmm. Second point, it is working with advisors, specifically the Berkeley Research Group, on cash management and has prioritized trying to find a buyer for its bye-bye baby business. Makes sense. The third point, which is the key point that puts a new spin on Mark Tritton's departure as CEO, in my opinion, is that the Bed Bath & Beyond board also authorized in November 2019 spending $1 billion on a three-year share repurchase plan, which the company completed or is on schedule to complete a year ahead of plan. For context, Bed Bath & Beyond spent $600 million on buybacks last fiscal year and another $43 million in the most recent quarter when its losses started to balloon saying in as recently as November 21 that it planned to complete the share repurchase in full in this fiscal 2022 year. And I'm curious, does this shed any new light on things for you or, or raise any new questions in your mind? I don't understand this at all. Me like neither. for multiple reasons. I mean, I think listeners, you might have to rewind 10 seconds to just play through and understand the points that are happening here. And and I encourage you to dig in. What was the, you you found, oh, that was for Coles. There was another um, interview that you listened to, but there's yeah. a, there's a, the Wall Street Journal does a really good job of breaking this down. But I think what I take away from this, the key points for me are they have a hundred million dollars left in cash reserves. And if you recall, I'm going to go back to that Ryan Cohen letter. Like, right. that's that's three salaries of the C-suite. So what's happening there? Like, what, what changes are being made at Bed Bath & Beyond here? They paid Mark Tritton $27 million, just him, in the last two years since they started this the buybacks and everything. And then I, I think the other part is, even if they do sell Bye Bye Baby, they which according to Mr. Chukumba of Loop Capital <laughs> Markets, who's quoted in the article, yeah. the Bye Bye Baby sale is only worth like $800 million. And then Bed Bath & Beyond is saying, oh yeah, we reduced our expenses by $100 million. Even if they, they do that, I don't understand how the whole thing pencils, like how, how Bed Bath & Beyond can stay afloat with the, the stock buybacks, with the, you know, the, the stock decreasing, 100%. like with nobody coming to the store. Like how is this all, fun how is this still a, functioning yeah and i'm gonna and i totally agree with you number one and i love that you dropped mr chakumba because i'm gonna actually drop him as well in a quote but like i'm gonna take what you just said and raise the ante on this okay okay because i mean i remember reading at the time too i was like wait what what are they doing and i can't believe i forgot this last week in the context of our conversation but it's why i love what we do because we get to talk about this as much as we want honestly but you know i was like why return money to shareholders in the midst of a turnaround mm -hmm. you're not in a good spot right so to me, it either smacks of hubris, like supreme overconfidence in your abilities as an executive team and as a board, or well, at, at, oh, go ahead. I was, they're, they're paying them. Like they, right. uh, they have that In addition to paying us, yeah. and then in addition to potentially making our options worth more value yep. for basically deciding to put our money there versus putting in the company to turn it around, which I think is interesting, which is means to me, so at best hubris, but at worst... I wouldn't be surprised if we're looking at a class action lawsuit on behalf of shareholders given this at some point. Because if I was a shareholder, oh. I would want answers. Yeah. And especially if I'm an employee of Bed Bath & Beyond, because the only people, like I said, the only people that win from a move like that is the C-suite and the short-term investors. And you don't believe me? Let's go back to Mr. Mr. Chikumba. Yeah. He said, for the Wall Street Journal, and I quote, it's unusual for a company in the middle of a turnaround that isn't going well to buy back stock that aggressively. Here, here, in my opinion. <laughs> oh my God! Well, let's see what happens. I'm, I'm excited. I'm, and it's gonna be fun as hell to watch. Yeah, again. especially yeah. like I want to see two stories together again. Yeah, I want to see another letter from Ryan Cohen and see what he, because he's the ten percent shareholder or something, right? It's like so he's gonna definitely. If anyone's leading that class action lawsuit, I have a feeling he might be. Yeah, maybe. Top yeah, of depending that Depending on when he did it. Yeah, um, that's interesting too. I don't have a Seinfeld analogy for this one, Ann, oh, so I'm gonna have to come shoot. up with that later. Shoot. Stay tuned, friends.